In this video, I introduce a human-level control policy through reinforcement learning. When we use reinforcement learning to find the control policy for Atari games, we have two challenges. First the challenge is the input image. Input state is a high-dimensional image, not a low-dimensional handcrafted features. A good solution is the convolutional neural network that can be used to learn a control policy from a raw data in a complex environment. Second challenge is uh, uh, that we cannot pair state and action in the Atari games because they couple each other. Therefore, we cannot set up exactly one step transition. But uh, because the one action corresponds to a sequence of frames, and now we just view a sequence of frames as a single state. To solve the, to find the control policy for Atari games, we use the DeepQ network. To use a gradient uh, descent method to uh, train the model, we first uh, we have this uh, Q value function, then we define a loss function here, and here is this uh, target. Uh, these are two uh, parameters. One is uh, for the Q network, another for the target network. To update the uh, model parameters, uh, we need to calculate the gradient of the object function. Here is the expectation formulation as to a time consuming. So to uh, simplify the problem, we use a stochastic uh, gradient descent method. That means we will calculate this, uh, uh, this gradient for one uh, simple sample, not for all the you know, samples. Here is the architecture of the Q network. Uh, which includes uh, two uh, networks. So why is the Q network? Why is the target network? We just need to train this Q network from uh, the input uh, state. And then uh, we find the Q value function of all the possible actions. And then uh, we just, uh, you know, at a certain time step after we just uh, copy the parameters from a uh, Q network to the target network run a forward pass together as a queue and combine with the incident reward together as a target to train this queue network in a supervised mind. To simplify the model training, we use the experience replay here. Here's the, you know, the details about the architecture of the queue network. Uh, this is like uh, sample, samples from the screen card, for example, we use four of them as a state. And uh, we crop you know, this uh, original image into a 40 by 40. And then now uh, we are stuck four of them together as the input to the Q network. Here are the three layers. as a one, three uh, convolutional layers, and the one uh, full connected layer, and one other, other layer. To train the Q network, uh, we need to use uh, episodic sampling to generate uh, sequential samples here from a current state to the terminal state. To gather a stable uh, model training, uh, we need to uh, uh, split these uh, sequential samples uh, into a one-step experience table. That means we just you know, split this uh, sequential uh, data uh, samples into piece by piece, you know, like each step we put in the replay buffer. Because right now, the, uh, this, uh, in, this uh, input, we need the uh, pre-processing function by to convert them to the input to the network. So actually in this uh, replay buffer, it's a, uh, phi t and uh, phi t plus one, because it's phi is from original states from the uh, 
from the side, from the original assembly. So from the, you know, when the agent uh, interacts with uh, his environment, it generates this uh, sample, this sequence samples, sequence samples, and then we generate uh, one step experience for the uh, replay buff. And when we train the model, we pick up uh, uh, samples uh, from the replay buffer. First, uh, we generate the target. Use this target, and then we train the Q network. And after time step, we just uh, you know copy the model parameters from a Q network to a target network, run a target network again to get the new target, and to you know come back train the use that uh, target to train this Q network. In this way, finally, we get the convergence of the model parameters and use the convergence of the model parameters to find the optimal policy and the optimal Q value function. Let's see a very, very simple example. This is a game, Pong is one of the Atari games. To find the control policy, first of all, we need to calculate what's the Q value. We need to estimate, estimate the Q value function. For example, at the step one, we have this input, uh, a input image, that's like a state S. And here is a two scores. Here we are, you know, agent here. Here is his opponent. And here we have only three uh, axes, no operation up and down. So we use this state as an input and processed by the pre-processing. Uh, function and input to the Q network. And then we find the Q value over the action A. That means, that, for example, address data S, and we uh, know uh, action up because the ball comes in this direction or bounced by this, uh, bounced by this uh, lower wall. That means we need to take action up. That means this uh, address state action up or have a higher Q value. So use the greedy uh, uh, policy, that means we need up. And then uh, when the ball comes, we just you know, hit the ball. So you need the up is the uh, is a better policy or better action. And then we hit the ball when the, his opponent missed the ball, then the agent will receive a uh, reward of one. And then here is the, this is the current Q value distribution. Here, this is the uh, next Q, uh, next Q distribution at the, you know, the next state. That's the, just the one uh, uh, episode. For more details, please uh, check with this reference. Thank you.